Today I'm going to show you how to use data structures that are backed by Couchbase. I'll be using .NET Core in this example, but these structures are also available with other SDKs. I'm going to be covering List, Queue, and Dictionary today. It's a Friday, and that means it's pizza night at the Groves house, so I've got some pizza-related code samples for you today. So let's start by reviewing .NET Lists. So here is list demo code. Now list is a collection of objects of a certain type. This is a list here of pizza places. I can add objects to it by saying pizza places .add, which I'm showing here. I can also remove objects or access objects by index. I'm not showing that in this example. If I run this app, you'll see that you could expect there to be two pl pizza places added to the list. I loop through the list, display them to console, and then add another item and loop through again and display them to console. So if I run this console app, this is what you'd expect to be output there. And that makes sense. All right. Now, that's just a plain .NET list. Let's switch this over to use a Couchbase list. So I've already added the Couchbase.NET SDK to this console application. Now when I do this, I have to switch list to Couchbase list. I have to pass into the constructor a bucket object, which corresponds to a Couchbase iBucket, and I have to give it a key, which will correspond to the Couchbase document. And you'll see more about what that means in a second here. So if I run this code example again, it's going to output the same exact thing, two objects, and then I add another one, and now there's three objects. If I switch over here to the uh, Couchbase console, you can see there's a document in the bucket that has the key what I specified to the constructor, list underscore pizza places. And if I view this document, you can see that it's a JSON array of JSON objects. Now that list is in a single document and it has a key of list underscore pizza places, which is what I specified when I instantiated it. So note, if you use the Couchbase list class, like I did here, it's going to go ahead and create the document if necessary, or it'll use the existing document with this key if it already exists. All right, next, let's review queues. So we'll comment out list demo and we'll turn on queue demo. Now, queues are similar to lists in .NET, but the semantics are different. So the order matters, of course, and the operations are therefore different. Instead of add, I use NQ there. And to get the object that's first in line on the queue, we call them lines here in the States, I use DQ. And it's going to pull the uh, first object that's in line in the queue. So in this example, I'm queuing up two pizza orders, one for Matt and one for Ali. I then dequeue the first order in line, print it to console. That one should be Matt's order. And then I queue up another order here for Caesar. And then I finish by writing out how many items are left in the queue. So I'd expect to see Matt's order written to console, and I expect to see two orders left in the queue. So I run this, and that's what I get from the console. Order one is completed, and there are two orders left. So let's switch this over to a Couchbase queue. So I'll switch it over like that. The difference, again, is I'm using Couchbase queue instead of just queue. I still have to pass in a bucket for Couchbase, and I'm going to use a different key here because it's going to store in a different document called queue underscore pizza orders. And so if I run this console app, it'll be the same behavior as before. Order one completed, there are two orders left in the queue. If I switch over here to the Couchbase console, you can see that there is a queue pizza orders document now. And if I edit that, you'll see that it's again a JSON array of JSON objects. So it looks exactly the same way that a list would look. The difference then is in how the .NET SDK treats it. Now it's important to notice um, that lists We've looked at lists so far, Couchbase list. It implements um, iList, implements iEnumerable, and iCollection. Look, actually, look at that. We can see that iList, iCollection, iEnumerable, uh, iEnumerable of T as well. And if we look at Q, Couchbase Q, it implements Couchbase Collection Base, which in turn implements iCollection and iEnumerable. So these will act very much like your normal in memory .NET Q and list. Let's look at dictionary finally, and hopefully you're starting to see a pattern emerge here. So with uh, dictionaries, you have a collection of keys and values. In this case, the key is a string, and the value is a pizza employee object. 
I'll start by adding two employees to the dictionary, Matt and Mary, with their uh, shifts and hourly wages. I'll loop through the dictionary by key and print out the employees. Here's the key, and then I print out the value dot hourly wage of the employee. And then I'll add another employee named Hero, who is paid a lot more. And so now I should have three items in the dictionary. Now each key in the dictionary must be unique. So if I try to add Matt again, I'm going to get an argument exception. So that's why I have this try and catch there. So I expect to see this error message written out. And finally, I'll print out the dictionary again, which should have three employees in there this time. So I'll go ahead and run this application here. You can see it's printing out the dictionary when it has two employees in it. I try to add a, another mat and I get an error. And then I print it out again after I've added hero and now I have three employees in the dictionary. So I'll switch over to Couchbase here, documents and you see that there is, nope, I skipped the part. I wanna add, I wanna switch over to Couchbase here first. So that was just a .NET in memory dictionary. Now I'm using a Couchbase dictionary, and again, passing in the Couchbase bucket and a key for the document. I'll run this again, and should be the same behavior. Two, exception, and then three. Switch over to Couchbase console. There's a dictionary for pizza staff. Edit that, and you can see that it's now a different structure than the list and the queue. So we have a JSON key here, and the value of that JSON key is a JSON object that's been serialized from the pizza employee objects. Let's go back to Couchbase Dictionary again, and we'll just look into the definition of that. We see that it does implement what you'd expect it to, I dictionary, I collection of key value pair, I enumerable of key value pair, and I enumerable. So it works very much the same way that an in-memory uh, dictionary does, except that it's backed by Couchbase. One more important thing to cover here is that Couchbase List, Couchbase Q, and Couchbase Dictionary all use the Couchbase sub-document API. Now the sub-document API allows the .NET SDK to access and modify individual parts of a document, so you don't have to send the whole document back and forth across the wire if you don't need to, if you're just trying to make one small change. So when possible, the entire document that holds the collection is not retrieved or mutated, but only the relevant part of the document. This is all done behind the scenes to improve performance and efficiency as much as possible, However, it's not always possible, at least not yet. So for instance, when doing a for each loop, like down here, it's going to need to fetch the entire document in order to loop over the items in the document, the items in the data structure. Now, if, for instance, there were some operations added to Couchbase in a future version to improve that, then you don't need to worry about that as a developer because you're already using the abstraction of Couchbase Dictionary or Couchbase List or Couchbase Q, and the changes will be made behind that abstraction. So that's all on data structures for now. The source code for this example is available on GitHub. So just check the video description for the link. If you have a question, please leave a comment or contact me on Twitter. I'm at mgroves. Thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.